Kia ora, welcome on into the Kiwi Football Fix. Great to have your company. And a little bit later on in the show, it'll be awesome to have the company of Live Chance. Football Ferns attacking midfielder. Yep, they went down uh, against the Australian Matildas in two matches recently. But great to have her on the show and, and to talk about uh, what improvements they can make ahead of the next fixtures they encounter. But before we talk to Liv, we've been joined in studio by a Wellington Phoenix midfielder, injured, doesn't get to play in Wellington, but he will be a big part of what they do come Sunday afternoon. Clayton Lewis, great to see you, mate. Thanks so much for your time today. Yeah, no worries. Happy to be here. Mate, how pumped are you? I know that you're out injured and we're, we're going to be missing your talents for a number of weeks, but how pumped are you for the Wellington Phoenix's return? 11 months you've been away from the capital. Yeah, it's going to be massive. I think, uh, you know, last season we did it as well. And that one game coming back to play in Wellington was... Uh, massive deal for us i think the the crowd was there they got behind us and you know we put on a massive performance as well so i think all the boys are going to be excited um and yeah i just can't wait to be there on sunday yeah i, I was there lucky enough to be there and um the reception that the yeah. yellow fever especially gave you uh, welcoming you back but um giving absolute a-holes to Mark Rudan and Andrew Durante. It was a really special environment to be a part of, and I think that maybe Central Coast Mariners will provide something similar this time around after what they did to you a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, for sure. It was a, it was a tough watch um, the other week, but I know the boys are going to be up for it. I think uh, you know, to, to lose a game like that um, wasn't great, um, but we had a good result. You know, last week against Western, and you know, hopefully another, another, another one this weekend. So it's going to be, a, it's going to be a good one. What about for yourself personally? Yep, pumped to be back, but with the ankle injury, yeah. it must be quite gutting to to not be able to take the field this weekend. Yeah, for sure. I think um, I was hoping to bring up 50 games this season um, for the Phoenix. Uh, you know, and it would have been probably two in Wellington, which is a bit disappointing, but. You know, uh, injuries are a part of football. Um, you just got to get on with it, and there's no point dwelling on it now. So, hopefully, you know, I can continue progressing, and you know, we make finals, and hopefully, I'll be ready for that. We'll talk more about your injury shortly. But um, first of all, how how weird is it for you? You know, you you, you grow up idolising the club, mm -hmm. you, you sign your contract, and you think, how cool is it going to be playing every other week at Sky Stadium? Yeah, that opportunity has been ripped away from you. Um, You've only played one game at Sky Stadium. How how bizarre is that to, to deal with? Yeah, it's it's crazy to think. I think um, you know the that's the world we're living in now. Um, but you know, just being a part of that game last year, I think it just proves how much of a a positive outcome you know the fans can have on us as a team and you know as a club. And I think. You know, this weekend's going to be another massive one, and I just hope that you know next season or even you know finals footy, if we can get there, um, it might even be a home fixture for us. So I'm really looking forward to uh, you know what's coming. What was it like when you returned last year? You know, the, being away for what was it? Something like 433 days yeah. or, or something to that effect. What was it like? And and you know some of the memories that will live with you forever. Yeah, it's obviously tough. You know, you go you go over to Wollongong and um, you know. Yeah, we had some fans there, but it's not quite the same. And I think, you know, week in, week out, not playing in front of many people, um, you know, it does take a little effect. Um, but then to come back and have a crowd like we did, um, you know, it just shows what, what crowds we can put on here. And hopefully, you know, next season we can do that as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great game. I just can't wait to be there. Yeah, and revenge against the Mariners. We, we spoke a little <laughs> bit before about the 5-0 the loss and yeah. that came after the 6-0 defeat to Melbourne City. How big a part to play will that result have in the, in the lead-up to the game? Uh, will Ufuk Tale be talking to the players and saying, look, you can't have these guys embarrass you on your home pitch. You've been away for 11 months. We need to produce today. Oh, to be fair, Uffy's pretty pretty chill about things. He likes to focus on what we can do. Um, you know, we can only control what we can. Um, so I think the boys will talk about that this is our time to get revenge. Um, but yeah, as for Uffy, I think he's gonna just keep keep us calm and you know keep playing the way we want to play because um, that's what's got us success um, uh, over the course of the season. So I think that's what you know his his message will be trying to get across. Uh, when you look at the playoffs. How confident are you that you'll make it, not only make it, but there's the potential to host 
a playoff game mm -hmm. at Sky Stadium. Yeah. I mean, that would be freaking awesome if we could pull that off, wouldn't it? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, we have all these games in hand and we're sitting quite nicely on the table, but, you know, those games in hand mean nothing if you don't win them. So I think it's a, it's a thing we really have to focus on, you know, getting a couple wins as early as possible in the last round of games. I think, you know, the last couple of games are tough. I think we got victory in Melbourne City twice. Um, which is, you know, a tough run in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, ho hopefully I, I would say maybe eight to nine points will be be enough. But, you know, that, that's just my opinion. I think I think that should hopefully get us get us into the playoffs. And when you're in the playoffs, because I've already put them in there, yeah. when you're in the playoffs, Clayton, who, who looms as that big threat to the Wellington Phoenix winning their first title? Is it, it, it simple to say Melbourne City who sit top? Yeah, I think they're the defending champions for a reason. I think they showed again this year how good they can be. Um, you know, they started off, you know, conceding a lot of goals, but then recently they've just been, you know, to another level. Um, but, you know, the A-League's crazy. Anyone can beat anyone on, on any given day. So I think you know, we back ourselves against against a lot of teams. And I think, you know, when we're playing well, there's a lot of teams that don't want to play us. Beyond this season, how excited are you to actually live in New Zealand and, mm. and play your football in New Zealand and to be surrounded by, by friends and family and loved ones? Yeah, it's, it's massive. I think that was one of the reasons I joined the Phoenix, so I could be, you know, closer to my family. Um, you know, I did a stint in England that didn't quite work out. But there was, that was two years away from my family. Come back, moved to Auckland, still away from my family. Um, and then done two seasons now in Sydney, still away from my family. So uh, <laughs> Sorry for laughing. Yeah, but just, uh, yeah it's uh, oh, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so ho hopefully next season, you know, I've got, I've got one more year on my contract. So hopefully um, we can be based in Wellington and then, you know, who knows what might happen. What do you want to happen? One year left on your contract, you, you desperately want to be part of the Wellington Phoenix moving forward? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, I'm enjoying my football here, um, the way we're playing. And, you know, if, we're, if we can continue to, you know, be pushing for the playoffs, that's something I want to be part of week in, week out. So I think the, the way that the club is set up and, and everything, I hope I can still be a part of that from time to come. The ankle injury. How, how bad was it? And, and where are you at in terms of your rehab? Like, when are we going to see you back? Yeah, so it was obviously tough to take. I uh, went in for a slide tackle. Ankle sort of buckled. Um, my body went one way. The ankle kind of went the other. Uh, torn most of the ligaments in the ankle, which is a bit niggly. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's one of those injuries happen in football. Um, but yeah, rehab has been good. I've I managed to come back to Auckland, um, work with the New Zealand physio, strength and conditioning coach. Um, so it's been it's been a, a good process at the moment. So continuing on, um, yeah, hopefully out the moon boot soon, and then uh, yeah, hopefully push pushing for for finals footy. So I'm just I'm begging the boys to get us there, <laughs> so I can get another another game before the end of the season. We've we've gone through to that intercontinental playoff, managed to beat Solomon Islands five nil over in Qatar, uh, and yes, you, you've got that in, in, the, in your, the forefront of your mind. You mm -hmm. want to be a part of that match. Yeah. H how much have you focused on Costa Rica as an opponent, and do you think that we've got what it takes to tip them up in a one-off game? I haven't focused on Costa Rica. Um, you know, I've obviously been back with the Phoenix and kind of focusing on what I can do with them, uh, but I know the staff are now looking at them um, a lot. And to be honest, I think the team we have... Um, you know, built the culture we've built in, in the New Zealand setup is is very good. I think you know we've got almost. I'm pretty sure everyone's a professional um, footballer um, now. So yeah, and the, the standard of quality we have, you know, coming through the ranks is uh, going to be massive. And I think you know we've got a very good chance. We're 90 minutes away from a World Cup, um, one-off game. You know, I, th I think we can do it. Does that suit the All Whites better, do you think? I, I ask this question of, of a lot of people, mm -hmm. but um, not often I, I get to sit down with an yeah. actual All White and ask them. You know, it, we, we're used to the home and away structure, but in 90 minutes against Costa Rica, does that suit the All Whites better? Yeah, I think obviously 90 minutes is a one-off game. Yeah, you know, anything can happen. I think, you know, it's a neutral venue too. Um, which obviously helps. Um, you know, I was part of the last campaign and, you know, at home it was a massive difference. Uh, you know, we drew nil-nil with Peru, um, but then going over there, their fans were just crazy mm. and, um, you know, gave them a massive lift um, for that. So 
you know, it's a, it's a, it's a neutral venue and a, and a one-off game, anything can happen. So, you know, I'm backing the boys and I'm, ho I'm hoping that I'm there as well. What of the World Cup? Because this is the last time that we qualify this way. Mm -hmm. um, come 2026, there are going to be a million teams involved. Yeah. Uh, what is it, 48? Yeah, 48 teams involved. So th this is kind of like the, the last truly special qualification route, mm -hmm. isn't it, for the All-Whites? Yeah, it is, but I think to even say you can go to a World Cup, I think that's a massive deal. Um, so, you know, I, I have every... I back us to get to get to the World Cup, um, and you know, if worst comes to worst and we don't, there's four years that we can you know prepare for that one. Um, but you know, at the moment, come June 13th, 14th, um, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be a crazy game, and you know, I, I urge everyone to get behind us for that one. Yeah, fingers crossed, you are there and you're fit and ready for it. But in the time being, we've got the Wellington Phoenix. Playoffs bound. I've, I've picked it already. Playoffs bound and up against the Mariners. What happens on Sunday when the Phoenix finally return to Sky Stadium? Uh, we win by how many, Clayton? I'm going two or three. I think I think we're gonna gonna prove a positive performance. I think it's gonna gonna be one that we're we're gonna get up for with the crowd. I think the crowd's gonna be amazing again. Um, you know, a good couple of goals to give them some nice celebrations as well. Hopefully, 80 minutes. Oh. Kits off. Yeah, not me, but... Well, not me, because, yeah, <laughs> I, I've got, like, the suit and tie and all that sort of stuff to whip off, so yeah, yeah, yeah. very unprofessional. <laughs> yeah, but ho hopefully we can see that happening in the 80th minute and, you know, and then hopefully they can all party um, come the end of the game. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Clayton, great to have you on the Kiwi Football Fix. All the best in your recovery. Hope to see you before the season's end, but I know that I'll see you on Sunday afternoon inside Sky Stadium. Thanks for your time, mate. Perfect, no worries. OK, we go from the Wellington Phoenix to the Football Ferns. They've gone down in two matches against the Australian Matildas. 2-1, agonising 2-1 defeat in Townsville. And then on Tuesday night in Canberra, 3-1 the result in favour of the home side. In the 50th clash between the Ford Football Ferns and the Australian Matildas, we're lucky enough to be joined on the show by the creative uh, midfielder or attacker. Call her what you will, Liv Chance. Great to have you on the show. How are you? Good, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it's obviously been a hard tour, but we've um, <coughs> made progression, so it might not look um, like it from the results, but we are um, slowly making those small steps. So what were the main lessons coming out of this um, two-match Australian tour then? Um, I think you can see from the first to the second game... Um, we had more possession, so I think that was a, a big aim for us on the second game. And, you know, there's still um, many things to improve, but our defensive grit in the first game was a, a key positive for us. Um, but, yeah, obviously a big take on is not conceding uh, so quickly after, you know, you concede the first one. It's really where you need to shut up shop. So... Yeah, I think, obviously, we need to try to keep the ball out of the net, but also keep the ball, be composed and uh, create chances so we can score goals. It was one of the challenges that Yitka Kumkova had for your squad to, to respond better in those moments when mistakes are made, have your chin up and be positive. How, how well do you think you coped on that front? Uh, I think, you know, we settled down um, after half time and uh, we kept, uh, kept trying to play football. And you can look at myself as a personal example uh, with, the, with the first goal. You know, a lot of that is on me. Uh, she was my man. So, you know, I should have done a better job um, to, you know, stop that potential goal that has happened. And, um, but then I've been able to create a chance for us and we've out been able to bring one back so it's making those little adjustments you know mentally as well to stay switched on even if uh, things don't go your way. On the defensive end of things and you, you've alluded to it there with uh, the the one-on-one -on -one with Sam Kerr at, at times it, it appeared a little chaotic in, in the opening exchanges what was going wrong from your point of view with with our defensive structure in that second match in Canberra? Uh, I think um, <clears throat> what we had in the first game with the grit and um, just getting our bodies on the line and being in their face, I think uh, we didn't start maybe as well as we did in the first game. So 
I think it, you know, it's just being physical. You know, they're a great team. They've got great players all over. You know, they're playing for clubs all over the world: Chelsea, Lyon. You know, so they're at a high caliber, and, and we needed to probably, you know, put them on the floor a little bit, and you know, uh, bring ourselves out and put them on the back foot. And we didn't do that as well in the beginning in the second game. Yeah, it was something that um, former football ferns coach Tom Samani said. Uh, he was part of the, uh, the the pre-game, the post-game analysis in studio, and um, he, he was more or less saying, "Look, the the Ford Football Ferns have put." They've really interpreted it as a friendly. They're being too friendly on the pitch and possibly showing too much respect to the Australian Matildas. And so I suppose this is what you're saying, Liv, that, that you, you afforded them too much space and time on the ball when really you just needed to smash them. Yeah, <laughs> in short, um, for sure. So, you know, that's uh, learnings that we'll take out from it. And, you know, especially in the second game, we ended... Uh, you know, the, the game with six younger players. And I, and I think that's a good sign, you know. We're progressing. We're getting other players on the field. And we're able to, you know, see the next generation coming through it. And I think that was huge. Because in the first game, the Matildas were on the back foot. And they didn't make many changes that, you know, were the inexperienced players. So, you know, I, I think it was a good tour and it was good for players coming in to get some good game time and see um, what it's like to play on the international level. It was good to see Hannah Wilkinson back on the scoring sheet as well, picking up a goal there in Canberra. Now, one of the comments that she made in the post-match interview was that when we create these chances, we need to be more clinical. I suppose it's a two-part question. How do we create more chances, Liv? And how do you become more clinical when the chances aren't presenting themselves as often as we'd like? Yeah, and I um, think that goes back to obviously your club environment as well, is putting yourself in those positions where you are able to have a lot of opportunities to, uh, to finish your chances like Wilkie has this season. Um, but also... Yeah, for us to get into good positions, we need to keep the ball, we need to be composed so the players that are creative in our team can have the ball more and be higher up the field so we can play those passes to the forward line. Well, how much pressure sits on your shoulders? Because when you think about it, you, you are our most creative outlet and, and I'm not trying to blow smoke up your you-know-where. You are really <laughs> technically gifted and very comfortable on the ball, Liv. There's no doubt about it. So how, how much pressure do you feel in those moments where we have secured possession and we need to try and create something? Are, are you feeling the stress of those situations? Um, no, not at all. Obviously, thank you for your kind words. But I think, you know, uh, we work a lot on that side of the game and pressure is a privilege. And it's something that, you know, I embrace. And that's like part of my game. I, I want to create opportunities for our forwards. I know I want us, you know, I want to put them in good positions so that they can score a lot of goals. And yeah, so, no, I, I love it and I just want us to keep building, getting on the ball more um, and the more chance that we have on the ball, I'll be able to hopefully create more opportunities. I don't know if I've recovered from the, uh, the loss in Townsville. I, I can only imagine what it must be like for you and the rest of the Ford Football Ferns squad to be up 1-0 and time added on and then have the home side just rip that result out of your grasp. What was it like in the moment? And what is it like, you know, four or five days on from, from that result? Because it must have been devastating. Yeah, and, and to be honest, it feels the same when you, from in the moment till now, I think, you know, we are um, devastated with the result and we know that there were many things that we could have done to prevent that result. And it wasn't just, you know, the initial goals. It was our game management could have been better um, in those final parts of the games. And But, you know, it's probably the hardest lesson we'll learn as um, a team that, you know, you need to be switched on for not just 90 minutes. It needs to be 96 minutes. And, um, yeah, so, you know, that's a harsh... Uh, learning for for the squad we know the result wasn't wasn't good for what we wanted we we wanted to win that game at that point in time 
you know, and the, and those games and those parts of it will help to the World Cup in um, New Zealand and Australia next year. Mm. Well, there were uh, plenty of positive moments in that first game. I mean, look at Victoria Essen's performance in goal. She must have saved something like, I don't know, high teens, and there were maybe more than 30 shots on her goal, yet she managed to repel <laughs> nearly everything. Yeah, yeah, and she had um, an unbelievable game, you know, um, Obviously, I don't need to tell you, but when you look at the highlights and uh, the save she pulls off and, you know, the confidence and you can see Polkenhorn's already celebrating her header because she thinks it in. And, um, yeah, I was proud of her, you know. She had a good sleep that night, but, yeah, she did an amazing job and, um, you know, we're thankful to have her as part of the team. And, and can you just quickly confirm for us, was Anna Green's goal, was that a, a cross or was it a shot? Because, I, I mean, look... I, I think I've seen that before and it's it's kind of like a, a, a mistimed cross, but she's going to claim it as a, a wonder strike on goal, isn't she? Yeah, she's claiming that, you know, that that's a wonder strike. And she has hit it really well. And, and you can see from uh, the angle from behind her, uh, the curl that it has on it. So, you know... We have to, you have to go with your teammate, and, that, and that's a shot all day long. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was such a wonderful strike. Amazing stuff. <laughs> all things considered, Liv, when you take into account uh, the series against Canada, um, bouncing back from Tokyo, uh, the, the win against Korea over there, um, the She Believes Cup, and now what you've faced in Australia, how do you feel we're tracking uh, towards 2023 and a home World Cup here in New Zealand? Um, yeah, I think obviously uh, the She Believes was probably a little step back and um, this tour has been a step forward. When you look down at the performances and you break you know, certain steps down that we want to improve on, uh, we're still you know, just over a year out from the World Cup and, and it's going to be a hard journey you know, there's always going to be little dips. Um, but, you know, coming into June, we really need to uh, look at individual stuff that we're going to go away with and what we can make better individually. And then collectively, it's just sticking to the game plan that we have with Yetka and really pushing ourselves uh, to perform it to, you know, the best of our ability. So you're off to Celtic <laughs> shortly then, yeah? And, and what, what's the rest of the season looking like? You're going to come up with some silverware? Oh, we hope so. So we've got probably around eight games left and uh, all things going well. We'll hopefully uh, be in the Scottish Cup on the 29th of May. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, obviously, we've still got the semi-final to play, but um, it'll be a, a big game for us. We have knocked out Rangers um, in both cups. So I think that's always nice um, to do that as a Celtic player. So, yeah, we're really looking to add another piece of silverware before the end of the season. A busy month and a half ahead for your live chance. Look, thanks so much for joining us on the Kiwi Football Fix. Hard luck in Australia, but all the best for the rest of the season. Eh? And we'll see you again on the Kiwi Football Fix. No worries. Thank you for having us. My thanks to Liv and to Clayton Lewis as well. Remember, the big game, the return match, the Phoenix back home in Wellington gets underway. 2.30, broadcast coverage begins 2.30 on Sky Sport 2. The Phoenix looking to provide a hiding to the Central Coast Mariners. They deserve it as well after what they did to us a couple of weeks ago. Knicks versus the Mariners, 2.30, Sky Sport 2. As for me, I'll see you there. But next time, in about seven days' time, I'll see you again on the Kiwi Football Fix. Ta-ta. Mm -hmm.